us and praise the Lord for he is good for he is good and he is good all of the time hallelujah I want to go to the word of God I want to go to the word of God Psalms 46 says that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein for he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters who may ascend into the hill of the Lord or who may stand in his holy place he who has clean hands and a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation this Jacob the generation of those who seek him who seek your faith lift up your hands O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in yes, who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty yes. the lord mighty in battle yes. lift up your head yes. O ye gates be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in yes. who is this king the lord of hosts he is the king of glory if you would just lift up your hands, he'll come in. And all that he has for you is coming with him. Will you give God a hand of praise? All what he's done. All what he's done. God, we thank you for the anointing that fills the house right now. Come sit directly by me, God. Reach out, God, and put your arms around me. Love on us today, God. Remind us that you are the king, the king of glory. All what he's done for me. Put your hands together. Woo! Yay! Oh! 
what he's done for me. Oh, 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 what is that for me? Oh, what is that for me? Oh, what is that for me? Oh, what is that for me?
Amen, amen. I'm excited this morning because we serve a holy God. We serve a worthy God. And I'm so grateful that we have lived to see another communion Sunday. And so I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said, when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord so we can worship and praise our God. And so this morning, I'm so glad to see everyone's face in the sanctuary. For those who are joining us online, we are so glad that you have selected to worship with Mount Calvary African Methodist Episcopal Church this morning. And I pray that each of us have come into this house with the spirit to worship the Lord. We're going to start our service out with the hymn of the church, hymn Zacharias. We're going to lift up hymn number 77, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, Tune Our Hearts to Sing Thy Grace, Streams of Mercy Never Cease, and Call for Songs of Loudest Praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Amen, amen. I hope you all listened to, to the words of that hymn. It, it's so appropriate for Communion Sunday. It, it says that uh, Jesus interposed his precious blood in that even though we're prone to wonder, that Lord, the Lord will take our heart and seal it. I hope we don't just sing these songs because they sound good, but that we listen. 
we listen because it speaks to what God has done for us. In this Lenten season, we need to think about the Lord who interposed his precious blood. This morning, we're going to be led in our invocation uh, by Reverend Angie Crawford Cox, and that will be followed by our scripture from Reverend Thomasine Adams. And then we'll have a selection from our choir in that order. Thank you, God. Yes. Hallelujah. Great is your mercy towards me. I'm going to be a little indignant this morning. 1972. My aunt she got in some serious trouble in Columbus, Ohio. And she sent three children, elementary school age, to live with me and my grandparents who, who really raised me the first 12 years of my life. They were bad. And my grandparents were of such that it didn't, you couldn't point the finger. Everybody got the whooping. And so I had one cousin, Brenda. She would always just kneel and take the beating from my grandfather. But I always ran off. And I would wait till daddy left. And then I would come back to the house. I never took a beating. If you, if you catch me, you, make, you can whoop me, but I never took a beating. I played basketball my junior and senior year of high school. I averaged two points a game. Eight, eight points at the most for an entire career. But I never played on a B team or was second string. I was varsity. And you can call John Portavent today. And he'll tell you the reason he put Angie in. Because I was a fighter. I'm going to take that ball. I was a forward that played like a point guard. I didn't contribute points to the game, but I contribute because I was a fighter. And I've testified before that I played a mini game and I never lost a game because I left it all on the court. And I want to pray today for some folk that are willing to fight for it. We have so many trials and troubles in China and Russia and stuff. COVID has left us messed up. But God is still on the throne. The earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. He established it. That's the God we can talk to and appeal to this morning. Shall we bow? Fighters, shall we pray Jesus 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 we come this morning before we ask for anything we want to just thank you for everything because you covered us totally when you died on the cross we were totally covered so this morning we said thank you God because when you died, you willed us peace. So many folk are living without peace. They're tossing all night. They're walking the floor. They're worried about their bills, their children, about tomorrow. When you are already there, you gave us peace. And I, the peace that you gave us, it, it surpasses 
the superficial peace of the world. You gave us a crazy peace, a ridiculous, an unbreakable, a water walking, abiding peace. And God, I thank you for peace this morning because my life and my time is in your hands. God, we pray this morning in this house that you will move whatever distracts, whatever blocks, whatever hinders, God, us from seeing you today. Let your word that shall come from the preacher this morning, let it fall on good ground, God, that we may leave here enthused, God, empowered, God, to run the race with patience, God. Isaiah 40 has given us a mandate. For you've said in your word, they that wait on the Lord, not should or could or might, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. You said we'd mount up with wings like eagles. You said we'd run and not faint. God, somebody needs to mount up today. Somebody needs to stand on it today. Stir up the fighter in us, God, that we not be whipped up by what's happening around us, God. Even though we see it, it is a reality, God. Help us to go within, God, and know that you have it all in control. We thank you for this church, God, who has been a beacon of light in this community, God. We thank you for the leadership and the fellowship. We, could, we pray, God, you just continue, God, to bless Mount Calvary, that we surely live up to the motto, that we are small enough to know you, large enough to grow you, because the God in us is extraordinary. Thank you, God, for not only hearing our prayers, but for answering our prayers in your own time and in your own way. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus. He's your only son and our only savior. The people of God said, amen, amen. Towards me, your loving kindness, your loving kindness. Towards me, your tender mercy, your tender mercy. I see day after day, day after day, day. always, forever faithful. Towards me, always provide. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your To the body of Christ, as we come on this communion Sunday, coming to the table, we come to remember and rejoice. Our scripture reading for this morning, will you please stand for the word of God, the gospel, coming from the gospel of St. John, the third verse which is the second Sunday of Lent reading. John the third chapter, verses 16 and 17, a familiar Bible passage, and it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, 
but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The word of God on this communion Sunday for the people of God. Amen.
Oh, bless the Lord. Somebody need to put it on. Somebody need to put it on in his hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I put this and that. I put this and that. I put this, this and that. I put this, this, this and that. I put it all. I put it all. I put it all in his hand. Oh, they ought to be a witness in the house this morning. They ought to be the witness in the house this morning. Because really, this used to be that. But when I put it in his hand, when I put it in his hand, when I put it in his hand, Yeah, yeah, I put it all in his hands. I put it all in his hands. Everything. I put it all in his hands. Oh, bless us. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Is there a witness in the house? Is there anybody in the house today that knows that he's good? And not just sometimes, but all the time that he's good. You ought to take about 30 seconds and just give God a praise. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Oh, how good God is. How good God is for allowing us the opportunity just one more time just to give him praise in his house. Oh, he's good. He's good. This morning we are have to, to be in the house of God once again. And those of you who may be visiting with us today, we are delighted to have you to come and to share. So if you are visiting with us today, this is your first time, second time, third time, your name is not on this particular church road. We want to see you, we want to celebrate you today. So will you please stand if you're in the house as a guest. Amen. Praise God. We, we celebrate you today. We praise God for you today, uh, for being a part of our worship experience here at Mount Calvary AME Church. Again, we thank you so much for coming, and we pray that you will come and see us again real soon. 
And at the close of the service, we do pray that you will be able to say that the distance were worth the distance. Again, we thank you so much for coming and sharing with us today in our worship experience. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It's good to be in the service today, is it not? It's good to be in the service today, is it not? It's good to be in the service today just one more time. Is there a witness in the house who's glad to be in the service just one more time? Just glad to be in the service just one more time. It is indeed good to be in the service. We do ask that you would keep all of our sick and our shut in, our bereaving others in prayer. Uh, but uh, we believe that there is power in prayer. There is no secret what God can do uh, through the power of prayer. So we do ask that you would keep uh, those persons who are sick, shut in, and bereaved and lifted up in our prayers. Uh, uh, the Lenten uh, guides, they are ready. If you have not received one, please receive one before you leave. Today on the uh, uh, table that the spiritual formation that they have set up there in the North Act. So you may uh, get a Lenten guide that will help you through uh, this Lenten season. The fourth quarterly conference will be held uh, on March the 28th at 6 p.m. Uh, March 28th at 6 p.m., our fourth quarterly conference before we move uh, into our annual conference in April. Our Good Friday service will be held on the 7th of April at 7 p.m. Uh, in person, in person here at Mount Calvary. Uh, it, it, it's the seven last words. We're also uh, using the Joshua, well, the Moses and Joshua motif. We have uh, three uh, young preachers under the age of uh, four young preachers under the age of 40, and we have uh, 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 three uh, that's uh, over. So we ask that you will come and <laughs> we ask that you come and share the experience with us on uh, Good Friday, on Good Friday at 7 p.m. Please put it on your calendar. Uh, you, do, you do not want to miss. You do not want to miss Good Friday on April the 7th. Our church conference will be held on the 21st of March. On the 21st of March at 7 p.m. in person, uh, our next church conference. Our next church conference. It's time to give. It's time to give. How excited we ought to be for the opportunity to give back to God a portion of that which God has given to us. Come on, can we put our hands together for the opportunity to give? Amen. For the Bible declares that it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. And, uh, beloved, we have the opportunity now to return unto the Lord uh, a portion of our tithes and our offerings unto him. And so if you have not received the envelope, we ask that you would please raise your hand. The usher will be happy uh, to give you an envelope. If you want to use your electronic device, uh, give through Giveify. You can give through Cash App. Our Cash App is dollar sign M-C-A-M-E-C. And you can give in that manner as well. As we prepare now to give our offering as we in our tithes, as we stand all over the church, the choir is going to sing and we're going to give. We're going to be led by our ushers. Joy is mine. 
today. Love is mine. Love is mine. Love is mine. Love today is mine. I'm so Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I'm to say time. Can't leave me behind. Victory today. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. come over the O Lord. As you take your seat, I ask that you would pray fervently for our preacher this morning. Uh, we know that when pews pray, preaching gets easier. And so I ask you to lift our pastor as he prepares to come and declare that which the Lord has placed on his heart to share with us today. The choir is going to come and lift up our sermonic selection, and then we'll hear from Pastor Bob. Amen. Kick out.
Oh, bless the Lord, yes. Total praise. God, our Father, we, we give you total praise this morning. Because you are good, you are merciful, and you are kind. God, we bless your name in this house. And we pray, God, that you will have your perfect way. Now, God, in the name of Jesus. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. Oh, bless the Lord. This morning, I want to call your attention uh, to the gospel of St. Mark. St. Mark's gospel, chapter 10. A very familiar passage of scripture. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, would that you read verses 35 through 45 of that pericope. But I want to live a few verses from that passage. Verses 35 through 45. The New International Version of the Bible has these words recorded. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right hand and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup? I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. We can, they replied. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I'll drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. Verse 45, for even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Simply want to tag this text this morning, seats, seats. Do you remember the game Musical Chairs? It is a simple game. I've seen it played here on more than one occasion. And I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just talking about what I'm talking about. I heard it through the grapevine that a certain member pushed a certain pregnant member out of a chair onto the floor doing a game of musical chairs here at Mount Calvary. Seats. Musical chairs is a, is, is, to play the game, there is a circle of chairs. And there is always one less chair than the number of players. The music begins to play, and when the music stops, all the players scramble for a seat. And the one without a seat is kicked out of the game. And the process continues until a winner is established. In Mark chapter 10, verses 35 to 45, we find the disciples of Jesus Christ playing a version 
of the game musical seats. The backdrop of today's pericope lets us know that uh, when chapter 10 opens, Jesus is teaching about divorce and he seeks to make the family whole. And then he picks up the little children that the people are bringing to him and he blesses them. And after he finishes uh, blessing the children, a rich young ruler came to him to inquire how he could get into heaven. And then Jesus focuses his attention on the future and predicts his death and resurrection. It is on the heels of these events that James and John uh, make a very ambitious request of Jesus. James and John are among the most favorite apostles, and they seek for themselves a place of recognition, distinction, and prominence because they want power, position, and prestige. James and John are pursuing reserved seats in the kingdom of God because they believe that Jesus is about to establish his kingdom. When they present themselves and their request to the Lord, it is very clear that they are only thinking of themselves. For this is a time in the life and ministry of Jesus when Jesus' attention is focused on his ministry and his mission. Because Jesus is facing Jerusalem and all of the things that will happen to him in Jerusalem. Jesus' heart is heavy with the cares of the world and his burden and trouble as he anticipates facing the cross. Yet these two disciples, they come to Jesus at this tender and sensitive moment in Jesus' life. When Jesus' mind is on his remaining task, and they request two special seats in the kingdom of God. It seems so selfish. It seems so shallow that these two disciples would be only interested in seats for themselves. They are completely ignoring all of the glory in all of the grandeur around them. They only have a sense of entitlement that is pushing them forward with their ambitious requests. I mean, with all of the heavenly presence and, and, and that's around them, they can only think about seats. But while James and John are looking for prominent places to sit, they are, they are, they are out of step with the Savior. Jesus is preparing to go to Jerusalem to give up his life. But James and John, they are asking for seats. They're concerned, they're concerned for places of status and power and recognition are incompatible with the ministry message and mission of Jesus. For they are preoccupied with earthly concerns rather than with heavenly opportunities. They are in the presence of Jesus who, who fed over 5,000 with two fish and five loaves, but they are asking for seats. They're in the presence of Jesus who is the Prince of Peace and has 10,000 blessings at his right hand, but all they can ask for are seats. They're in the presence of Jesus who has healed, forgive, who has forgiven and, and, and shown mercy and has eternal life, but all they want are 
seats. So Jesus asked James and John if they could drink of the eternal cup from which he would drink and be baptized with the baptism he would receive. Jesus asked them if they really could do what was required of them to do and, 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 and if, they really were, if they really were ready for the challenges and the questions and the difficulties, the trials, the tribulations, and the trauma that comes with deceit. Although they said they, they could do it, but they ain't ready. Jesus said, you don't know it, but you're going to have to do it in just a few short days from now. The disciples of Jesus, they are under the misnotion that Jesus would use his power and influence to take over the religious and the political systems of the day. Their concept of Jesus' mission was for Jesus to set up an earthly kingdom. And this concept was so prevalent among them that they were vying for position of leadership and authority. But I'm convinced that Jesus had no intention of leaving his divine program of redemption into the hands of selfish leaders whose sights were set on seats and not service. And I might as well throw this in the gumbo today. There's nothing wrong with ambition. Ambition is an instinct of nature and a desire to rise. However, it is like all others' instincts and because it is capable of producing good or evil. I mean, the devil can grab you and your ambition and say you can sit on the thrones of fame and power. And that's what happened to James and John. James and John, they, they become mirrors for us to see ourselves. And because a lot of us, we want some special seats in the kingdom of God. But can I tell you, beloved, when, when we seek great things for ourselves only, such worldly ambitions lead to evil. However, when we seek great things for Jesus and the church, God gets into it. And it becomes something sanctified and something holy. Jesus really wants them to see something. And, and, and what Jesus really wants them to see in the asking is in verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many. In other words, Jesus is saying to them, I, I didn't even come looking for a seat. I came to serve. And Jesus tells them that if you want to be great, if you want to get the eye of the Savior, if you want to know how to get the ear of the Redeemer, you must be a servant. You must serve and not be served. Your, your focus must be on service and not seats. And that's the first thing that Jesus lets us know, that it's, 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 it's all about service and not about seats. Jesus said discipleship is about service and not seats. And when you are in the service of the Lord, discipleship has no guarantee. We live at risk. There is no safe way to serve the Lord. Authentic service requires exposure, vulnerability, and accessibility. When we become suffering servants in the service of the Lord, we live on the margins. 
We live on the edge of calamity and disaster for the sake of the kingdom. To be a disciple of Jesus, service is not optional. It grows out of a divine imperative and it is a mandate of the kingdom of God. In other words, it's in the words of the spiritual that says, Lord, I'm out here on your word. And if I die on the battlefield, I'm out here on your word. We are at risk. And, and although we are at risk, we know that we are not on our own. We are not alone. But we have the hands of an almighty God wrapped all around us. And because we know that we are not alone, but, uh, we know that whatever the challenges, whatever the threats, whatever the dangers we will face, we are blessed with divine companionship and with heavenly fellowship. And because of that, we can say he walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me I am his own uh, because we know how to put service before seats we can sing. Be not dismayed. Whatever be tied, God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. But you are more concerned about seats than service. Then you won't understand Ah, that the seats are for a prepared people. And when you are more concerned with service than seats, I declare bodies will be healed. Hearts will be unburdened. Minds will be regulated. Souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. When you're more concerned about service than seats, hopes will be restored. Demons will be overthrown. Temptation will be overcome. When you serve, saints will be edified. When you serve, angels will get excited. When you serve, blessings will begin to flow. When you serve, So it's not about seats. It's about service. Then it's not about seats. It's about being faithful. When you are a suffering servant of the Lord and when you are involved in the service of the Lord, it requires you to be faithful. And being faithful means doing and working in the service of the Lord, whether or not you are recognized, called on, or have a title or a position. Being faithful means being counted on to be present at the appointed time. And, 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 and that's why I absolutely love myself some pew members. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I, I, I absolutely love, I haven't always loved pew members, but I had to get to that point where God showed me how important pew members are. I love pew members because pew members are faithful. Yeah, they, they, they are faithful. They don't have to be called on. They don't have to be recognized. They don't have to have a title. They don't have to put, have a position. They're just good pew members. Ah, they are going, they, they, they are faithful because they are going to be present. I don't care if it's sun shining or whether it's raining or whether it's snowing, a pew member is going to show up. You can look at the pew that they sit on and they will be present. No, no matter what's going on, no matter who's preaching in the house, they will always be. Ah, it, 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 
I know it takes all to be involved. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also takes a person who's going to be faithful to the work and in the service of the Lord. Uh, service is about making a commitment to be faithful. We must commit ourselves to making uh, the world a better place. We must lift some heavy burdens. We must break some yokes. Uh, we must help the broken. We must feed the hungry. We must clothe the naked. We got to be faithful. Not only must you involve yourself in service and not cease, not only must you be faithful, no matter where you are sitting, but this is what Jesus says to them about cease. It's in verse 40. He says to them, in essence, God is in charge of the seats. When we are serving the Lord with gladness, when you are faithful in your service, when you know him, then you know that God is in charge of the seats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God is in charge of the seats. And, 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 and nobody can put us in a seat or take us out of a seat that God has put you in because God is in charge of the seats. There is no political scheme that can get you uh, a seat in glory. We cannot prescribe or predict for God where we will sit in the kingdom of God. The population of the kingdom of God is by divine invitation only. The seats and the stations are reserved and assigned by God without any human intervention. The seats in God's kingdom are not determined by request, bequest, or bloodline, but they are determined by service. And Jesus said, but to sit at my right or my left, is not for me to grant. The, these places belong to those uh, uh, whom they have been prepared for. Uh, and who are they prepared for? Uh, uh, John said, they, they are, they, these are they uh, who came out of great trials and tribulations. Uh, these are they who had to come up on the rough side of the mountain. Uh, these are they who had to shed uh, tears in the midnight hour. These are they who had to give up the right for the wrong. Uh, these are they who had have the rose washed in the blood of the lamb. Well, Jesus not only came to render the humblest service, but he also came to pay the highest price by dying on the cross as a ransom for our sins. Yeah, from heaven, from heaven highest bliss and glory, he descended to earth lowest depths of suffering and shame. Isaiah said he was despised and rejected. He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Well, good day, children. I'm through, but I just want to let you know today it's all about service and not about seats. It's all about service and not about seats. It's all about service. And not about and not about seats. Uh, for Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, uh, you got to involve yourself uh, in the service of the Lord. Uh, you got to do something. Uh, if you want to be something, uh, you got to involve yourself uh, in the service of the Lord. Uh, is there anybody here? Uh, is there anybody here who want to sign up uh, for the service of the Lord? Uh, it doesn't matter where you sit. You can involve yourself in the service of the Lord. He's looking. He's looking. He's looking for somebody. He's looking for somebody just to be faithful enough to say, as Isaiah said, Hear my Hear my, send me, I'll go, 
Hear my, hear my, send me out, go. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Yes. Jesus says he came to serve and not to be served. For if you really want to be great in the kingdom of God, then one thing about it, you have to be willing to serve. It's not, beloved, it's, it's, it's not about seats. It's about service. And, 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 and can I give you a news flash? If you don't involve yourself in the service of the kingdom of God down here, why do you think you're going to have a seat up there? It's not going to happen. Not today. It's not going to happen. But you got to involve yourself in the service. In service. Don't, 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 don't allow your ambition to get the best of you. Because you do know in the story, it, it says the other ten disciples, they became angry at James and John. Because James and John pushed for a position in the kingdom. Don't mistreat, misuse, abuse your brother, your sister to try to get a position or a title. That's not godly. That's not holy. That's not right. The Bible declares that your, your gifts will make room for you. You don't have to try to nudge anybody out to get a position. Your gift, your gift will make room for you. It will. It will. And, 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 and it's your gift. It's uniquely you. My gift is not like your gift. My gift is not like other preachers' gifts. And theirs not like mine. But my gift, your gift will make room for you. I'm a witness. Every promotion that I've received, I didn't ask for. I had colleagues bucking. They always buck and undercut to try to get to a certain church. I ain't never did that. I just be still. And let God, let God. I'm here at Mount Calvary, not because I asked to come. I was called. (laughs) 
And I got sense enough to realize that there are many gifted preachers in the Second Episcopal District. I, I know that. I've seen them. But whatever my gift is, was a gift that this house needed at this particular time. This house needed the gifts that I had, and the gifts that I have at this particular time. So I got the call. Your gifts will make room for you. Don't, 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 don't be concerned about seats. Be concerned about service. Be faithful to what God has blessed you with. Because God assigned seats. Now I'm through on this communion Sunday, on this Lenten, in this Lenten season. But remember, don't allow your ambition to get the best of you. Y'all playing something if I go, yeah, fall in love with Jesus. Falling. Falling in love. We're standing all over the church. Falling in love. Falling in love with you. Oh, the invitation is extended this morning. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, we invite you to come. If you're here this morning, and you need a church home, we invite you to come. I would love to be your pastor. The members of Mount Calvary would love on you, help you grow to become everything that you need and ought to be. If you're here this morning, you've fallen out with God, you've fallen out with church, but you want to come back to God, and you want to come back to church, the door is open. The invitation is just for you this morning. Fall in. With Oh, the door is open this morning. In this arm. In this arm. Oh, the door is open. The door is open. The invitation is extended this morning just for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We waited on you.
in Mount Calvary. I'm so excited today to welcome our newest members to the family. Here to, today we have Sister Ashley, uh, Brother Marcellus, and their son, Brother Carter, who were coming to join us from St. James AME Church in Florida. So they'll be transferring in, and we thank God for sending them our way. Now let's love on them, as Mount Calvary does. God bless you. God bless you. We welcome this family to our church family on this day. And we give God the praise and the honor for the, all the things that God is doing in our lives here at Mount Calvary. Come on, Mount Calvary. Let's welcome our new members to the fold. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and because they are coming from Amy Church, because they are coming from Amy Church, we'll be a connection church. They, they're coming to Mount Calvary. So they're coming right now on, on the full, full membership. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because we are family. Amen. Praise God. We praise God for how God is, is increasing our, 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 our family. He's increasing our family week yes. by week. And we praise God for what God is doing in our in, 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 in our ministry here at Mount Calvary. Amen, amen, amen. In the life and ministry of Mount Calvary, God is moving. And we thank God for what God is doing. Amen. amen. Praise God, praise God. Uh, next Sunday, I believe, next Sunday, Sister Joy. Next Sunday is Missionary Day. Yeah, missionary, the next, annual missionary day next Sunday. Yeah. Amen. So the missionaries, the Women Missionary Society, the uh, Emma Jane Gardner Women Missionary Society invite you back on next Sunday to help them celebrate uh, their annual day. And uh, they want to see a seal white in the house next Sunday. Amen. Amen. For the annual missionary day. Amen. Amen. We are now ready to go into our service of Holy Communion. And we do uh, invite all believers in Christ Jesus to partake with us in Holy Communion. If you did not receive your communion packet, please raise your hand. Uh, Usher will be happy to assist you and to uh, get you a communion packet. Our communion hymn is, let us break bread together on our knees. As we stand all over the church, join and sing in this great hymn of the church. Break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. When I fall on my knees, with my face. You that do truly earn to repent of your sin, love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following commandments of God and walk from henceforth in his holy ways. Take this holy sacrament to your comfort. Make your humble confession to almighty God. You may be seated. General confession all together. Almighty, almighty God, God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, maker, maker of, of all, all things, things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty. 
provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. Most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your great mercy has promised forgiveness of sin to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto you, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all of our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of all hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you in word and magnify your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is very meet, right, our bounden duty that we shall of all times and all places give thanks unto you, O Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your holy name evermore, praising you, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory be to you, O Lord, most we high. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusted in our own righteousness, but in your manifolds and great mercies. We are not word is so much as to gather the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose prophet is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, to eat the flesh of your dear son Jesus Christ and to drink his blood that our sinful souls and bodies may be made clean by his death and washed through his blood and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made that by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute in this holy gospel Command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receive in these your creatures of bread and wine. According to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, gave it to them, saying, Take, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament which was shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. As often as you should drink it, do so in remembrance of me. The body of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was broken for me on Calvary. I take, I eat, and I'm thankful that Jesus died for a sinner like me. The blood, my Savior's blood, when the blood of pigeons, heifers, bulls, could no longer atone for the sins of humankind. Jesus went to Calvary and he shed his blood just for me. Yes, sir. What can wash away my sins? Nothing, Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Yes, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. It reaches to the highest mountain. It flows to the lowest valley. The blood will never lose its power. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's vein, sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilt this day. 
I take, I drink, and I'm thankful that Jesus died to forgive me and to save me from my sins. By coming to the table, I have renewed my covenant. I now rise and I take the name of the Lord with me. My brothers and my sisters, you have before you the broken body of Jesus. Take, eat, feast in your heart, knowing that Jesus, that he died for your sins. You have the blood of Jesus before you, the cup. Take, drink, feast in your heart, knowing that Jesus shed his blood just for you. By partaking in Holy Communion, you have renewed your covenant. Therefore, you may go in peace. And may the peace of God go with you. The Lord's prayer together, our, our Father, Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we, your humble servants, desire your fatherly goodness, merciful to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto you. Humbly beseeching you that all who are partakers of this holy communion may be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy, though through our manifold sins to offer unto you any sacrifice, Yet we beseech you to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto you, O Father, Almighty, world without end, and man. As we stand all over the church, you ought to look to that neighbor to the left, look to that neighbor to the right, tell that neighbor on the left to hold on, to that neighbor to the right to hold on. Time is filled. Everybody ought to hold, hold to God. I'm gonna hold. Hold to God. I'm gonna be my 
my home song things in eternal. And I'm going to hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled. Time, Time is filled with swift transition. Not on earth I'm And hold to God's unchanging hand. Everybody ought to hold, hold to God. I'm gonna hold, hold to God. I'm gonna be my hopes on things eternal. I'm gonna hold to God's unchanging hand. Covenant will not leave you. Whatsoever. Whatsoever you may bring. If by earthly friends forsake us, you are still more closely to him cling. Come on and hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Come on and hold to God's unchanging hand. It's been a good day. It's been a great day. It's been a mighty, mighty good day. And we praise God for it, and we praise God for you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all And now, my Father's children, I say unto you, as the Lord said unto Moses, that Moses may say to Aaron, Aaron may say to the children of Israel, and now may the Lord bless you and keep you in your going out and in your coming in. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you yes, in your labor and in your leisure. Yes. May the Lord be gracious to you in your joy and in your sorrow. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you in your laughter and in your tears. And may the Lord give you peace that surpasses all understanding today, tomorrow, and forever. So go in love. Go in peace. Yeah. Go in joy. Go expecting a miracle today. And the people of God said together.
Thank you for engaging in the ministry of giving. You can go to our website and click the Give tab. You can call the church office and give your gift with your debit or credit card. You can mail your gift to the church. You can bring your gift to the church during office hours, Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4 p.m. You can give through Cash App on your smart device. Thank you for joining our virtual worship experience and may God continue to bless and keep you. Until the next Lord's Day, be well and be safe.